Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Martins, um, and I'm here to talk about memory efficiency and ways we could fix it. And I'll start with a short motivation with what got us here. Linux keeps the, a map of all physical uh, memory in its page table, in, in the kernel page tables, which is called the direct map. The side space is modified uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, throughout the different OS uh, uh, stages uh, throughout the OS lifecycle. At boot, we are initializing uh, uh, the, the memory map and all the system RAM, or at hot plug, when you, you know, when you're hot plugging a new memory, or when you try to map an IO address. Portions of this address bit may be baked by various kinds of metadata, um, which track different different things and have different granularities. We have memblock, which describes blocks uh, of memory. Uh, you have the underlying um, memory model, so VMAP map, and um, which looks like a single contiguous regions, which in each individual uh, address uh, points to struct pages. Although, um, at the, at the lower end, as you can see, you have sweat pages. Uh, the address space, though, may be managed. The, what goes in the actual uh, page tables may be done in uh, bigger chunks. So usually it's often the case that you use two megabyte pages uh, for the direct map. So what the process may think it has mapped when it sets up it, it, uh, a guest uh, with the memory slots or any private VNM data. When you, when you enter the kernel and you switch to the kernel page tables, you have all guest memory read rightly available alongside other kernel, um, uh, kernel allocations or anonymous memory. With respect to this, uh, the direct map, I would like to highlight one particular metadata structure that is struct page, which is going to be the source of most of the talk. Uh, the data structure design uh, is largely derived by the needs of page cache and anonymous memory. And it's also a structure used by most kernel services in the most granular way of tracking memory. The purpose of the, the structure, the data structure, is to track um, references to PFN uh, alongside um, uh, file mappings uh, and other speci subsystem specific um, data. Usually uh, you get one of those uh, struct pages when you say use the body allocator with alloc page or uh, get three pages uh, or you, you grab a reference to an existing page um, to a particular page with get user pages or you pin memory short or long term. Although the data structure has some overhead, uh, the size of the structure is about 64 bytes, and it's usually tracking uh, 4K, although certain architectures allow this to be tracked in um, a bigger chunk, like ARM64 lets you play with what's going to be the underlying page size, uh, so saying 64K. Um, in, on top of the structure, you have other overheads on top, like you spend eight bytes per EPT entry, and the process page tables you spend about eight bytes as well for each PT entry. Although these costs can be available when you try to use uh, huge pages, which to amortize this, that page table cost to a great extent. So when you put it all together, we are just talking about 1.5% to 1.75% of post physical memory, which at a first glance does not look much. But let's, let's uh, revisit uh, what that actually means in practical terms. Um, so if we extrapolate that to say two terabytes of memory, we are spending about 32 to 36 gigabytes of memory. Uh, so for short, that's roughly, that's 16 gigs per terabyte. And if you borrow for a slightly bigger machine like an eight terabyte machine, you spend about 128 gigabytes of memory to 160 gigabytes of memory. These are not really um, crazy numbers. They're actually numbers on the machines we have problems with, uh, where a lot of this memory you're spending 
could uh, hopefully be used to actually boot more guests. If we take in consideration how uh, uh, how this where this is going and that the fact that beams are getting more dense, uh, if you take a 64 terabytes machine to put this overhead in perspective, you would be spending about 1.2 terabytes um, in circ page. Take that into account with the recent spect uh, the recent um, vulnerabilities in hardware in CPUs, where we could speculatively take advantage of these code gadgets or the, um, or you could potentially leak uh, all the memory map uh, by the kernel in user space uh, or e exploiting through more uh, CPU resources uh, to lower CPU resources like the L1 cache, the L1 data cache or microarchitectural buffers. Uh, one thing, all these have one thing in common, which is given that the kernel maps everything, therefore everything is leakable. The one I would like to give special emphasis is Spectre V1, which is hard to mitigate. Um, and that you have just so many code gadgets you need to hunt and every new merge window adds potentially new code gadgets that you could exploit. So the main premise I'm trying to raise here is, can we do better for hypervisors? Uh, the problem uh, the problem you see is that a uh, given struct page does not really reflect what goes in the page tables. Um, and if you look at more modern hypervisors, uh, we won't be needing the majority of the kernel services, say if you were just doing CPU, memory, and PCI device assignment. Uh, on those circumstances, we are essentially we uh, essentially losing uh, a lot of efficiency to what represents a largely idle data structure throughout the uh, guest's lifetime or host lifetime, while potentially unnecessarily mapping all customers' data when we probably don't need to. So the first step towards fixing some of this led us to. What happens if you try to remove search page? First, let me describe what today is one way you could you can do some of this, and that's through devmem and mem equals x. Uh, what essentially you do as a user is you specify mem equals and some amount, and that's going to be an amount which you're limited to by the kernel. And you have this special device called devmem where you can map every, uh, every memory on the system. Um, one problem, there are a couple of problems with this that I would like to enumerate. Uh, first and foremost, when you specify mem equals x, you have no way to characterize what exactly you wanted to take that amount from. So you potentially either restrict to one to the first node or straddling all no uh, uh, nodes uh, to fulfill that parameter. Although you do have uh, a mechanism that you do not necessarily need to have struct pages to that memory, and, but you're limited to a single contiguous chunk. Also, you can only map, uh, you can only memory map uh, that memory in 4K uh, page sizes. You have no two megabyte huge pages or one gigabyte huge pages. Which then goes to my next point. Uh, when you're dealing with fragmentation uh, across hundreds, thousands of um, uh, guests' creations in teardowns, you're potentially dealing with the fragmented systems. So in addition to not having huge pages, which sort of amortizes some of that, um, uh, you want the ability to pick holes, uh, free, ho uh, free holes you have within allocated chunks to accommodate the given allocation. Um, and in order to do that with devmem, you need to map several times devmem and, and use different page offsets. Um, but you still need to give devmem access to a given VMM, which then you know, breaks a little bit uh, the case where a VMM runs in a potentially deprivileged environment and therefore should not have been able to map any memory on the system. And finally, you don't have a way to give some of that memory back 
to the kernel, so you try to rescue the host from uh, out of memory uh, situation. All of these problems, let us look at tax, uh, which is the other mechanism, um, which purpose is to give you direct access to memory. Uh, its bigger consumer is PMEM, and the interface behind that device tax is very simple. It's a character device, which you instrument to CZFS, you create to CZFS, and which just lets you in the kernel memory map uh, a given chunk of memory. Application is uh, a, a given memory map, so all this metadata is then created. Um, and application has control over how the memory is mapped, like in 4K pages, two megabyte or one gigabyte pages. And any exception you have, uh, like MCEs and XCD6, are forward back to the application. Uh, they, you get a signal. And final, finally, you have memory, you, you have mechanisms to return that, back, me, that memory back to the kernel, say with DAX KMEM driver. Uh, you can emulate some of this uh, with memmap option, although the problem with using this option is that you give, a, it, that option has a lot of um, power uh, uh, into messing up with your memory map. So users really need deep knowledge of what your hardware memory map looks like to be able to pick an actual run range. One thing I'd like to clarify here uh, is that usually people confuse uh, call DAX as one thing, but there are two kinds of DAXs and, and there's the PMAM. So there is device DAX, which is this very simple uh, device. There's PMAM, which is a block device, and there's file system DAX which purpose is to bypass the page cache. So these are all three different things and the one I'm emphasizing here is DAX, device DAX. As I'm sort of hinting, there is a couple of problems with device DAX uh, and it's largely uh, derived from its biggest consumer, which is PMAN. NVIDIM persistent memory namespaces are not supported, uh, do not support these contiguous uh, regions. They support uh, only, you can only have a namespace with one contiguous chunk. Uh, in addition to that, uh, because you need to initialize all these many struct pages, you have long initialization time of your uh, DAX device in bringing it online because you need to clear all that memory. And to add that, while you can represent huge pages uh, in the page tables, uh, the way these page struct pages look are not uh, are not the same as say transparent huge pages or HP TLBFS where you you would have a head page and a couple of tell pages to represent a two megabyte or one gigabyte page. Uh, so these you gotta look at the page tables to understand whether a given struct page belongs or not to a, a, a huge page. And finally, you need architectural support for DevMap, which is the kernel way to tell that this device, this particular page, uh, um, page table, a PFN belongs to a particular device map and therefore a zone device, special zone in the, uh, in the kernel. So um, the main question we got, were, we got into was how we could repurpose some of this uh, device text already provides you uh, uh, everything that we need and how we could repurpose some of this while fixing, uh, making some improvements to repurpose this to volatile memory. With that, let us look to DAX HMEM, which is the driver which can be used for performance differentiated RAM. Uh, we essentially remove this memmap option uh, from here and we instead use EFI and we added the FI memory map uh, such that we mark RAM uh, ranges with EFI sp specific memory. So we only need to care uh, in, uh, about RAM ranges and we don't need to understand uh, how exactly is firmware exposing uh, everything else that is not RAM. And we essentially have an ability for firmware to dedicate memory to user space. When memory is tagged with this specific purpose attribute, it means that the kernel is going to create one DAX device and as give that uh, to user space as a memory mappable uh, that, that DAX device. Uh, 
So we essentially all had to, we had to fix is we had to just support these contiguous regions where we try to pick all three ranges to accommodate the given allocation as opposed to um, uh, deal with uh, just contiguous chunks and, we, and that helps tremendously with dealing with fragmentation. And then the way you allocate this, you can either give the application control over what ranges to pick or you can resort to the DAX mediation where there's a simple range allocated where it adjusts uh, ranges or allocate new ones to fulfill the allocation provided by the user. The fact where you specify mappings is especially useful for use cases like VMM live restart, uh, KMU live update or uh, uh, KVM live update where you want to preserve the exact same ranges while not scrubbing that memory the next time you memory map it again. Uh, and so I like to defer to Jason Zhang and Steven Cesar's presentations, which cover a lot of uh, what I refer here. So the next step was then obviously to remove struct page from device tags. Uh, a lot of the bigger infrastructure work was for repurposing DAX and so fixing this discontiguous limitation. And all that left remaining was to uh, have a pageless memory map. And we still keep the same properties behind DAX, so uh, static TFM mapping for a given VA range. And so uh, you still know what you will know um, at device creation, what a, a VA is going to be mapped to a particular PFM. And essentially, the VMA type is going to be essentially a PFM map, which in core, VM, core MM means that I have no struct pages. We leverage a lot of the work done by Karim Rathmat, where it introduces an alternative guest mapping series when memory is not picked by struct pages. And we had to simply fix not in KVM, we leverage a lot of that works. So we had no changes specific to DAX or anything, it was mostly bug fixes, which are general to the usage of PFM maps. Um, but we had to support huge pages for page special. Page special is how the kernel says, uh, this memory does not have a swift page. And finally, we had to fix out memory failure as the kernel bails out uh, early um, uh, when it has an MCU on memory, it does not track. And we had to uh, reflect what's, uh, what the actual cache property uh, is for RAM and so be able to map it as write back as opposed to uncacheable. But that's nothing really different than it's not done for DevMem. And again, there was no logic specific to DAX uh, to make this work. So I would like to defer to the previous diagram I explained earlier, where we would have all the memory tags in the rack map and uh, and what we're essentially doing here by removing struct page, we gain this memory efficiency back and remove other guests' memory from the direct map. So less subject to leakage. In practice, uh, what we would do is you would specify this EFI fake map. Uh, the option, as you can tell from what it, it describes, it's not really intuitive. So they still work there to make this slightly more user-friendly. But what we are essentially describing here is that my hypervisor is going to have 16 gigabytes per node available for user space, um, kernel managed allocations, or and you associate the rest for DEX. And so DEX has 368 uh, gigs per node. So you essentially bring up two regions, one per number node. On a procfs, this appears as like soft reserved, and you then supposed to use the DAX tools to instrument this region, or you know you can also come up with the, your own tools which uses the CFS ABI uh, for the purpose. And you can then create uh, various devices with you know a 30 gigabytes guest with uh, a given huge pages, and you select which uh, region you want. Um, and then optionally, what I'm, we are trying to introduce with pages memory is that you pass on this no metadata and you are not going to create struct pages for these DAX devices, uh, which also tremendously speeds up the bring up of the device. On KMU, you then use this like any other regular file-based memory. And 
not, there's nothing really different there, and it's the same for UCLBFS or any other uh, shared memory mechanism. Uh, use cases that I see for this, you could let a KVM bind to these devices, similar to what we do for DAXKMM, where we give back memory to the kernel. But here, uh, KVM would use it to, uh, to back some of those data structures used when doing work on behalf of the guest, such as we would be hiding the vCPU registers um, or KVM IOPIC. And there is a couple of call sites, I'm just, this is just for example, buying purposes does not need to be pageless so long as it's not part of the direct map or it's isolated in some form. But this could be one way to implement a poor man version of process local memory, which was a sub point proposed by some of the AWS folks. Um, the user space, another use case could be to use this memory for any other VMM allocations, and it could well serve as a memory pool as opposed to resort to anonymous allocations. To recap on some of the advantages, by removing thread page, you sort of kill to um, birds in one shot, which is uh, you get a ton of memory back uh, that is being lost in thread page. Uh, and fundamentally, because your the kernel does not map the memory, the, the that same customer data is less prone to leakage by other guests. Use cases by uh, preserving that memory across uh, hypervisor or VNN live, up, uh, live update are more easily done fundamentally, given that how DAX works and gives that control to the application. Um, and hunting down Spectre on the gadgets, especially those done on the context of guest memory, gets a lot more easily mitigated. But there are pitfalls in doing this approach as well. And that means that once you remove thread page, uh, you're on your own. Uh, and so subsystems don't really work well without it. And you're largely um, losing certain kind of services, given they don't have get user pages, screen user pages, and so on and so forth. So for example, an easy pick is that direct IO and uh, zero copy networking IO doesn't work. Uh, for example, if you do send message, message zero copy, or if you use ODirect, um, you, given that get user pages do not return you any actual struct pages, it, you know, you will fade the, 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 um, the IO. This does work for certain specialized cases, such as the case of KVM, or if you do basic PCI assignment, but even there, there are some issues uh, in which you need to, in addition to use full PFN, you're expected to track page table entry updates to reflect that in your secondary MMU mapping. So usually need to uh, register some form of memory notifier uh, in addition to use it for OPFM. KVM does it right, uh, but other subsystems would need so. So if you're mapping, if you're giving a device to VFIO, uh, it does work today, but if you invalidate one given VA range, um, you may want to reflect that into the IMMU um, underlying mappings. IO does work, but again, is limited to uh, copy-based, which is also the default in vhostnet. vhost does work because the MM owner is the same as the VMM, is the VMM. So we just had to come up with a little trick with vhost uh, SCSI for remote storage, where you allocate staging buffers for um, uh, drive some of that um, uh, I.O. But there's a big, there's a big uh, drawback, which is lo uh, losing kernel services. And so what are the directions we are looking at here? Naturally, this uh, goes, um, there are two approaches. Another long-term approach we are looking at, which is SI, which takes a, a safer approach into securing a greater portion of what KVN is handling versus this approach of removing struct page, which is the opposite, which is you're trying to protect uh, certain chunks of memory. But I believe this could work uh, in concert. And so you could use this mechanism to say, protect uh, uh, customers and using ASI to protect VMM and kernel private details is a better, that's a better catch-all to what's going to be um, 
a number of allocations then on behalf of the guest. But maybe the pages could also serve as a performance improvement. Say, if you're not exiting to user space, would you need, could you lift some of these mitigations, say the NDS flush, if you're not exiting to user space? Could that serve as a performance optimization? Also, the larger problem at hand here is that uh, you, uh, we need to work better. Uh, struct pages need to reflect better what the underlying size and the page table. Or the alternative is to have subsystems work with struct pages. One good example is the large page in the page cache work is that you only look at the page head pages to compute any address, um, uh, uh, any computations we do on a particular address. And we don't need to use all those tail pages and that sort of becomes an implementation detail uh, uh, from subsystem or from user perspective. So get to the pages, for example, will just return you head pages and no tail pages, just as a more easy example. But there is also an interesting approach, which I thought I would mention that happened like a month or so ago. And that is for external memory locators like HLBFS and DEX, I'd like to remind that DEX also used for PM. This, so this is not only applicable for this, but for also persistent memory. But one interesting question raised by the ByteDance folks is, what happens if portions of the VMAN map reuse the same tail pages? Uh, sorry, uh, what if all these tail pages could use the same big, big memory, provided that you represent in a subset of unique uh, stock pages all the information that you need for a two megabyte or one gigabyte page? What happens if the remaining ones are not needed and they all point to the same memory. Um, that would mean one thing, you need less memory to bake those strike pages. You still have those strike pages. Uh, so the, it does look like that you have one uniquely to every 4K chunk. They are just pointing to the same memory. If such a mechanism was possible, uh, that would be applicable for UCL BFS index, which pre-allocate and pre-assign chunks at boot, or rather can pre-assign chunks at boot. And if DEX had support for these more page com uh, compound pages, uh, it would also serve, um, it also, could also fix uh, other problems we have for persistent memory, uh, uh, where we would pin faster or initialize quicker some of these DEX, some of these namespaces. These are also, something we are looking at at the moment and hopefully we, we can have an update um, in a few weeks. And with that, I'd like to conclude um, for 5.10 is going to have a lot of this uh, repurposing of DEX for volatile memory and provides a way to carve out struct page, um, which fills up, uh, fits a given uh, use case when your hypervisor is not using so many, uh, this, that need to provide so many kernel services. Uh, the DAX huge pages uh, proper support is going to continue and we are looking at alternatives such that we don't have such a big compromise into having, giving away so many kernel services. And what I was trying to propose here is to have sort of a harder boundary between uh, what's hypervised and what's guest and what's guest or customer data. And at least and lesser known for me was that when you strip away such a core data structures as a sub page, uh, it was interesting to know that uh, it, not much is needed other when your hypervisor doesn't need to provide that much uh, services. And with that, thank you for listening to me. Some links here of some of the work I'm talking about. I'd like to thank Matthew, uh, Mike Kravitz, uh, Lihan Alon and Nikita as they all were part of this work. Thank you.